So um, the title of the talk is Interfacing with AI in React Native. And like all things in life, there's usually the easy way and the right way. Um, and you constantly sort of figuring out like, which one do you pick? And if you're like a senior in software engineering, you've probably heard like, oh, it depends. That's not what we're here for today. We're like, why not both? Do it the easy way and like do things correctly. So that's sort of the overarching theme of what I'm going to talk about. Um, before we dive in, uh, I am a Kanch, uh, developer at Adhikara Goa, and I am a TypeScript nerd. So we'll talk a lot of TypeScript things. Um, I also maintain the video UI kits for React Native at Agora and I make like subpar art. So if you want to find uh, some of those, you can go to Twitter. Um, the slides will be on GitHub as well. And um, I'll do a demo. Uh, hopefully live demos are scary, but maybe we'll, you know, make them work. Um, so link like code for those will also be on GitHub if you want to take a look. Okay. So why should you care? That's probably the first slide I put when I'm giving a talk. Um, and you're probably wondering if you're building like an AI app, um, how many of you like show of hands, how many of you've been, you know, dabbling with AI, building like an AI app on like React Native otherwise, uh, few hands, few hands. Okay. So let's maybe, maybe change that. Okay. So the idea is pretty straightforward, right? Like in React Native, at least you have like a button and you can add an event on press and call your API in the button, like function event thing, right? And this seems fairly correct, right? Like what's the problem? Why do I, why am I talking about like interfacing with AI? Like what's the problem here? Any ideas? Anyone in the audience? Like, is this okay? Is this cool? Maybe I can help. That's, that's correct. That's, that's one problem, <laughs> but the other idea is that you're exposing your API key in your application bundle. Right. And I mean, people would like be quick to assume that, Hey, I can just like put it in my environment variables and that's fine. Well, it's not really. And sort of this tweet, which hopefully if it loads, um, we'll see is sort of what motivated me to sort of come here. Let's double check. We have internet. Looks like we do. Um, that's a good question. Let's see. see if that works. Okay, great. So there's this tweet by Cyril, um, who sort of talks about almost half the apps on the app store are in some way leaking their API credentials. Right. And, um, this is sort of what I was, uh, trying to show in here. Um, even if you compile down your code, these are usually Swift apps, right? Even if you're compiling your code and like storing it in your info.plist, you can still access, like decompile the source code and access the API string, right? And you might sort of go like, Hey, I'll just like encode it in like some way and like store it in some format. You can always do a string search, no matter what you're doing, this will exist. And this is a problem. Um, well, you might argue that I can read through like some security documentation on expo and use some library and do something. I mean. I have another tweet here, which doesn't look like it's going to load. So we'll do the old fashioned thing and we'll open it in the browser. So the idea is anything of value that can be hacked will be hacked. It's only a matter of time and motivation. Um, so if there's something in your bundle that you're giving the user access to, it will be hacked. Um, next tweet is. If you're using OpenAI, chances are this is incredibly valuable, right? Like you're spending thousands of dollars sort of, you know, accessing and building out this AI app, at least that's the idea right now. Maybe this things change in the future. So we've established things of value can be hacked, will be hacked. OpenAI keys are valuable. Uh, and again, to sort of argue is 
if someone can develop this thing which sort of decrypts an obfuscated like pixelized string from an image back to the text surely they can do a string search in your source code cool everyone with me so far does does, does anyone disagree okay great this was the hard part now building and fixing this is is the easy part so the solution to this is fairly trivial how can you steal what isn't there and let's sort of go forward so it's time for the b word we're going to write a back end <laughs> and i love doing this going to like a front end react native like meet up and talking about back ends that's that's my jam um uh, but don't worry it's going to be fairly straight forward and we're just going to like write typescript it's going to be super simple we have about 10 minutes left so we'll talk through it it's going to be really trivial all of anyone any back end devs in the house oh nice so everyone after this talk should be able to sort of call themselves a full stack or a back end dev that's the idea and we'll not just use typescript we'll also use like create t3 turbo which gives you an expo app how many of you have used expo awesome expo is the only way to write react native you can fight me on twitter uh and uh, sort of the api layer or the back end technology that we're using is called trpc um how many of you use trpc heard of trpc awesome so great audience we'll we'll talk about trpc so right now the code snippet that i showed you what happens is there is an app and there is open ai and you're sort of calling this api with your prompt and your key and we talked about how that's bad right so the solution is sort of putting plopping a back end in the middle which has your key and sort of signs the request so your app only gives the prompt to the back end it adds the key and sends it across to whatever service that you want um in this way you've sort of removed the attack vector from the app to the back end that's fair but your app source code is accessible or at least your compiled app is accessible to millions of users if you do things right your back end shouldn't be accessible to anyone so this is a much better way of doing things in my opinion much secure um so enough talk let's uh maybe jump to the code um if you want to start out there's a fairly simple way to uh, scaffold or create pc turbo app and that's what that looks like you can find it in the slides later but i will show you what that looks like now all right so we have a demo folder and the only two things we sort of care about is this index which is just bog standard expo application nothing special about it and there's this special file which i'll sort of describe and talk about so let's see what's happening right now okay let's bring up our simulator make sure that looks right cool so i'm using like an open ai chat completion api right now so you can do something like what um the answer to the universe is and with any luck it should return you know something what that is is things that ai people will figure out um but cool so that works we we use sort of the snippet that i showed you before there's some button which has some function and this function sort of does a fetch request does that make sense does every, everyone understand all good awesome then we're setting some state to sort of show this on the screen that's fairly standard react native stuff now the idea is once you've set up uh, a turbo create these turbo app this gives you something called a trpc router um you can have keys in the router these are like functions so it's like defining a function here which exists in your backend and calling this function over here which exists in your front end so there's a sort of api that's sort of abstracted away for you and what we can do is we can describe what input this function takes so let's say this will accept um something called a prompt and it will be of a type string and instead of just returning that input what this will do is sort of we'll just steal some code from here so this is my front end this is my back end they coexist which is great so i can just take this entire thing and plop it here let's see what the errors are so it needs a secret so i can access my env here which is happening on the back end so it's fine to do uh i already have the time so let's get rid of this 
we have our key. Um, this needs some input, so I can just get this line here and access it over here. So input has the prompt that we just defined. And I'll just trim it and slice it so that you know nothing bad can happen. Um, up next, this needs to return some response that our front end can con consume. So let's say if this is if this happens correctly, we can get this response and sort of return, or we can just get some code from here instead of typing it out ourselves. And return the data. So one quick TypeScript thing that I really like is if you have an API that you don't control and you're fairly certain it's going to stay the same way, what I like to do is just call it in like a curl, like just access it somehow, do a curl request or whatever. And whatever response you get, you can use it as your like type completion thing. So if I do data dot, it will just tell me like what all is available, which is super convenient. All right. That looks... Is everyone following so far? I just like copied some code from my front end and put it in my back end. That's all I've done. Right? And that's pretty much what I had before. And let's also just make sure we fix our syntax. Let's just get it. And if you know something like opening a crashes will just return uh, null, which is probably fine. Cool. So that's all the TRPC side of things. Um, how do you access this function in the front end, right? Like that's the interesting bit, in my opinion. So you have something called um, API that you get from this library. So you can do something like API dot, uh, and let's make sure we've imported API, which gives you our post sort of router, which I just showed you. It gives you this function called ask GPT. And this function sort of has something called a use mutation hook. How many of you used, uh, you used React query at show of hands? Nice. So this is just React query, nothing, nothing new. So you can do const uh, chat GPT equals this. Um, this is your mutation hook. Now you can do something like chat GPT dot mutate async, um, await this thing, this gives you some data and this expects a prompt. So this will just be our input. Let's make sure the spellings are right. And if the data exists, we'll just set that to the output. And hopefully this makes sense. Um, so I had like this secret thing here, which was sort of um, my open API key string. Um, now I don't need this anymore. So like it's not part of my source code anymore. Uh, let's save it here. Make sure Expo knows we've updated the app. And now with any luck, it should still work the same way. Everything will work out well. So um, that's, that's the idea. That's how simple it is to like write backends. It's just defining functions that you can access on the front end. You don't have to do like Kubernetes to like scale, which we'll come to in, in a second, which is a huge gripe I have with um, people and backends in general. But you don't have to do anything fancy to like, I have to define my API in this way and like do this and then only I can like, you know, be called a backend developer. Um, none of that. Cool. So that fairly worked out. Um, demos are hard. I have like backup slides because, you know, what if things don't work out, which they did some bad. Um, plus, did I mention that you also get a Next.js website that shares the same backend when you're using Create E3 Dogo? So if you were building like an open AI based, like, you know, reactive application with this template or boilerplate or whatever you want to call it, it also ships with an entire website that you can use and code share your backend with. So if you're building a website out, perfect. If you're, if you're not, it's completely fine. Um, why I'm excited about this is since this is a monorepo, we're using Next.js as our backend. How many of you have used Next.js? Show of hands. 
fairly few of you here, right? And next sort of is a backend framework which people argue about. Uh, debate for another day, but it also ships with like cool things like Prisma, TRPC, Tailwind, um, all things that I hope like the React community really likes. So coming to Kubernetes and deployment, right? Since it's all serverless, there is no long living servers. You can just execute one command and have a long, like have just, you know, the, your backend deployed, nothing to worry about. Um, and it's extremely scalable. So like virtually limitless scale um, right from starting out, no DevOps needed. I hate DevOps because I don't know how to do DevOps. Um, and it's fairly cheap. So uh, with Lambdas, you get 100 GB hours per month for free. Each request takes like few, like fraction of a second, hopefully. So like it's fairly cheap. Um, but you can, you know, get this one level forward or like one step uh, one step up, which is you can move your back into the edge, which is something you can do fairly trivially um, if you spend time. Um, and this becomes even faster and cheaper because there's no data access, there's no DB, so you can like call things closer to the user. So this is both faster and since um, edge functions are incredibly cheap, uh, so you can get like 500,000 execution units per month for free without having to pay for anything, which is great. Um, and you can code share. So shout out to Geeky Ants. If you're using something like Solito and Native Base, which these guys develop, um, you can code share between web and mobile. So you can have like one code base, which builds out to web, mobile, which is Android iOS, and also like backend, which sort of coexists with your like one repo that you have to maintain. And everything just is type safe and everything's great. Um, again, huge shout out to Julius for creating this project. Um, it's incredible, like the level of detail these guys have put in um, to making things really easy to understand and really easy to use is just phenomenal. Um, and that's pretty much all I have for today. So thank you so much for your time. Um, the idea is to sort of inspire you to like write backend code and not be intimidated. Um, so like make cool things, inspire other people, um, follow me on Twitter if you want. Um, that's all I have. Thank you so much.